today we are looking at multiplying using the distributive property. And know that when we talk about the distributive property, we're actually talking about the distributive law of multiplication over addition. A product can be found by decomposing the factors into small numbers, multiplying the two new expressions, then adding the products. That sounds a little bit more complicated than what it is. Decomposing simply means to break apart. So we can break apart larger numbers, factors, into smaller numbers. Then we multiply the two new expressions. An expression is simply, you know, uh, 3 times 6, uh, 4 times 8. It's, it's not a number sentence. It doesn't have an equal sign. Then we add the products. Let's look at the rule. It states that when you have a number A times the quantity of B plus C, that is equal to or the same as, that, as the product of A and B plus the product of A and C. That might have sounded confusing. Let's try it with some smaller numbers, a problem that you already know the answer to, to get an idea how this property works. Let's try 4 times 6. Let's have 4 be the A. And let's break 6 apart into two numbers that are easier to multiply. Now, I already know what 4 times 6 is, and I'm sure you do too. The purpose is to deepen our understanding of the distributive property with something that we know so that we can apply this to problems that are more difficult, that we don't immediately know. Let's break 6 apart into 3 plus 3. That's not the only way we could break it apart. We could break it apart to, into 5 plus 1 or 4 plus 2. Well, that's going to be the same as 4 times 3. And this is where the word distribute comes in. We're distributing the A to the B, and then the A to the C. So we've got 4 times 3, and because this is plus, we're talking about addition here, multiplying over addition, we're going to add the product of 4 times the second 3. Well, 4 times 3 is 12, and we just did it. 4 times 3 is still 12. So the answer is 24. And those of you that know your multiplication facts, you knew that 4 times 6 was 24 already. We just proved that the distributive property works. Let's try it with a number that is a little, with a problem that's a little bit more difficult. Okay, let's try 7 times 54. Okay, so we've got 7 times 54. So the A will be 7. And let's just break this up into 50 plus 4. When I do this, I'm paralleling the work up here so that hopefully the more we do it, the, the more familiar it will become. So now we're going to distribute the 7 times 50. plus 7 times 4. 7 times 5 is 35, so 7 times 50 is 350, 7 times 4 is 28, and so our answer is 378. Now let's try another problem. Let's try one that is even more complex. Let's do 8 times 314. Well, this time I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break the, the 314 into 300 plus 10 plus 4. Okay, so 8 times 300 plus 8 times 10 
plus 8 times 4. Okay, 8 times 300. Well, 8 times 3 is 24. This is 8 times 300, so we get those zeros. 8 times 10 is 80. 8 times 4 is 32. Now we could stack and add. I'm actually running out of room there. I'm going to erase these just to give me a little bit more room. Normally in math, I don't erase anything because I want to preserve my work. I can look back and see if I made a mistake, but on this computer screen here, I, I can't do that. So. 2, 8, and 3 is 11, 4 plus 1 is 5, and then we've got 2,512. So there you have it. That's using the distributive property for multiplication. I hope this was helpful.